to my kitchen. If you're new, my name is Leah and I am all about spending less and creating more, which starts in the grocery store. So I have a whole playlist of grocery hauls down below for you where you can see how I shop on a budget, get some clearance deals and how you can do the same. But after you've bought those groceries, you need to know what to do with them. So that is why we are here making this video for Stocktober. I am wanting to stock up my freezer with some easy meals because that not only helps me use up what I've bought in a creative way, but it also helps me stay out of the drive through and getting takeout whenever I just don't feel like cooking because yes, Savvy saute does not always feel like cooking. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna make some chicken today that's going into the freezer for some easy meal prep. I'm making some loaded potato soup. I'm also doing some breakfast prep, including my favorite biscuits and gravy recipe. So let's get started. Put some chicken into my oven, get that going. It's so easy, I've done this a million times. I like to have some cooked chicken on hand in my freezer. That way I can just pull it out, add it to a salad, put it in a soup, into a pasta, fajitos, burritos, tacos, anything. It's so fast. The seasoning I'm gonna use, it just has a lot of different flavors in there. There's no salt, so I'm gonna add salt as well, but it's a good basic seasoning. And then if I choose to do this chicken with like a taco meal, or anything else. This is so simple and basic that I can easily add other flavors like cumin, chili powder to make it more of a Mexican flavor. So this is just a good base. I'm gonna get my potatoes here. I'm not using all of these, but I like to use yellow potatoes because that way I don't have to peel them. The skin on them is really nice and tender and it's better than a russet potato. If you're going to use russets, then just make sure you peel them. But I'm gonna use an onion, my potatoes of choice, and I'm also going to use instant potatoes. This is a really great way to thicken your soup without using a heavy cream and it gives extra flavor. This one is my favorite. It's the Pepper Jack Monterey. So it gives a really good cheesy peppery flavor. We're also going to use some milk. We're gonna boil everything in water, which of course is free. Cream cheese, I love to use this for some creamy cheesy factor, <laughs> of course, cream cheese. And then you can load it up with other things like cooked bacon, some shredded cheese on top, sour cream, green onions. So that's what I like to do after it's all made. So I'm going to get the bacon prepped to have ready as well. But this is what you're using inside the soup. Everything else is topping. So let's start with our potatoes. I'm just going to probably do about 10 of these to make a nice big pot. And I'm going to chop them into some small pieces, quarter the potato, just little bite size. They're going to get smaller as they cook. And some of them will even get a little mushy mashed, you know? There's a new technical term for you, mush mashed. I just don't like to have big chunks of potato in my soup, but I also don't want them cut so small that they're all really mushy. Because then you don't really seem to have much of a bite. I'm going to cook my soup in my Instant Pot. It'll just be out of the way and really simple. And then I'm just going to measure these real quick just to give you an idea of what I'm doing, how many cups of potato I'm actually putting into the soup. One large onion has a nice loose chop on it. And don't get rid of these peels. You can go ahead and save them in a Ziploc bag and use them to make a vegetable broth. I just keep one Ziploc bag in my freezer and just load it up. And then when it gets full, it can have the vegetable peels. It, don't keep a sticker. <laughs> but it can have the onion peel, celery, it can have carrots, anything that you are not using, the little bits and pieces, scraps, save them for your broth. So now we have all of our onion, potatoes, and we're going to fill it up to a nice level to have soup and boil all of this. Now 
now I'm going to get my bacon cooked. I'm just gonna do this on the stove top, get it nice and crispy, and set that aside in the freezer for cooked bacon to go on our soup. Yeah, I would do this in my cast iron, but I don't have a really deep cast iron, and I am going to be making a lot of gravy later. So I wanted one pan that's already greasy and ready to go. So now while I've got the bacon and chicken in the oven, I'm gonna work on our biscuits. I like to use frozen butter because I grate it and it just comes out so much easier that way. I also like to use self-rising flour, but you could use all-purpose and baking powder. I just think self-rising works the best. Buttermilk tastes the best, so let's get started. Now I am doubling this recipe, so I'm going to use four and a half cups of my self-rising flour. Now White Lily is my absolute favorite to use, but today I'm going to use Martha White. And then we've got two sticks of frozen butter. This is one whole cup or half a pound. And then we're gonna grate it. This just helps the butter get combined into the flour really easily without it getting super greasy and melty. So if you're starting with butter that is not frozen, you're not gonna be able to grate it very well. You could just cube up some room temperature or refrigerated butter, but having it grated, it just makes it go even faster and it just combines it, I think, just a little better than the cubes. Can't forget about our bacon either, so keeping an eye on that. I'm using bacon ends because I got such a good deal on it. This whole big piece of fat, of course, I'm not going to put back into my freezer with cooked bacon, but it is giving us some nice grease for our gravy. So we'll just keep that going in there. We're going to use buttermilk, and then I just got this local to me. We're gonna use two cups since we're doubling our recipe. To make these flaky layered biscuits, we're going to roll it flat a little bit, put some flour in between the layer, and then do that again. Fold it over, add some flour, roll it a little bit. And we'll do that about four times. Then I'm just going to take my circle cutter and cut out my biscuits.
I'll just bake those at 400 until they're nice and golden brown. Now the rest of this buttermilk is gonna go bad before I make biscuits again. So I'm going to stick it into my freezer, but I don't need to use all of this for one more batch of biscuits. I'm going to separate into two sections and then get that all into my freezer, label it, and then I can just defrost it the night before I wanna make biscuits. So now that our chicken is cooked, I'm going to slice it. I've let it cool so I don't burn myself, but I'm just going to slice this into smaller pieces that I can easily put into any recipe. Now the only reason why I didn't butterfly it like I normally would whenever I'm making a smaller batch of chicken is because I wouldn't have had enough room on one pan to do that for the entire package of chicken. So I just took the fast route and I kept the whole chicken breast and now I am butterflying it. If you have never really considered making pre-cooked meat for your freezer, it is a game changer. Go down your freezer section in your grocery store and see what kind of things they have available for you to purchase. You can buy everything from pulled pork to just seasoned chicken breast that's been cooked and sliced for you. So if you see something that is a really convenient idea that you would love to purchase, but you don't wanna spend the money on it, go ahead and make it yourself. If it's in the freezer section there, you can do it in your freezer at home. And I've also kept broth in each bag just to help keep the chicken nice and moist and juicy. So now from that family pack, I have four bags of chicken. And let me tell you, it is so much easier to defrost a bag of cooked meat last minute and use it in your recipe, have dinner done in like 20 minutes, as opposed to trying to defrost raw meat. This is so much more convenient. I also have our bag of bacon for our soup. Now while our biscuits are almost done, I'm gonna get started on some eggs. That way we can do like an egg scramble for the freezer and everyone can just pull out an individual breakfast. I'm gonna start by cooking my sausage. Gonna release the pressure for our soup. So here's the sausage for our gravy, and then this sausage is going to be for some breakfast biscuits. All right, next we're going to use some flour, salt and pepper, and milk. But we're gonna to wanna to work quickly here. So we're going to put in some flour. More flour that you use, the thicker the gravy will be. You're making a roux right now. So I start with a little bit and keep working my way to see how much I need. So I definitely need more than that. Stir that up and it should start to be more like a paste. And we're also going to want to make sure that we season really well before we add any of our milk. Add some pepper. We're gonna add our milk. Now our biscuits are out of the oven too. So that looks great. You want some? You gotta blow on it. Now that our breakfast items are just about done, our soup is ready for the next step. So I'm gonna add some salt, pepper, and cream turn cheese. This onto, turn this on to saute. So 
So I have seven cups of gravy. There's about three fourths cup of gravy in each one. I'm gonna put some scrambled eggs on top of the gravy and then a biscuit on top of it. So let's get cracking these eggs. I'm going to do 12 muffin egg cups. So I'm just going to spray it with some of this. You could use butter or use a paper towel and some oil. We just wanna make sure that they don't stick at all. And then we're going to put some eggs in each cup. Yeah, I had to spray it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna add any cheese or anything because I will put a slice of cheese on each biscuit. So I'm going to get my eggs cooked here. Now our cream cheese has totally melted. And while this is boiling, I'm going to add our potato flakes. So I stir that in, it's going to thicken really well. And then if it's too thick, we can add some milk. So go ahead and turn this off. Let that settle. So I've got my eggs on top of all the gravy. Now this is one of Dakota's favorite breakfasts. He loves to have you know, gravy and eggs and biscuits all put together. He doesn't you know, keep his food separate. So all of you that don't like your food to touch, I'm sorry, this might be traumatic for you. Um, but you know, you can always do things separate too. You don't have to have it all in one container. So I have one and a half biscuits on each. Here is our breakfast sandwiches. Some are just cheese and eggs, and then others have the sausage too. All right, so I have them wrapped in saran wrap individually and then put down into Ziploc bags so they're protected in the freezer. You can thaw them out overnight in the fridge if you know that's what you want for breakfast the next day, or you can just defrost them in the microwave with a paper towel. So I like to put our soup into Ziploc bags that just freezes it flat, it's easier to store. And then I can put a bag into a big container like this and it helps keep the mess from being too bad trying to get it into the bag. Then I don't get anything all around the zipper either. So it just makes it easier. So here is everything that we got done today. I have the bags of seasoned cooked chicken strips. I have the bacon that's gonna go with our soup. So there's two bags of soup. We also have our breakfast sandwiches and our breakfast bowls, the gravy, eggs, and biscuits. So hopefully this gave you some inspiration to start stocking up your freezer with easy foods to serve to you and your family in the next couple of months. And of course, until the next video, I'll see you in the comments.